Hi everyone, I'm Heather Black, CEO of Supermums, and I run the Consultancy Skills course to help people upskill as professional Salesforce admins and consultants. On the course, we cover business analysis, change management, and agile project management. And I'm delivering some little bite-sized training sessions that we cover in the course, just to give you a taste of what we do. So within this session, I'm going to be talking about the 10 documents that you produce for a Salesforce project. And on our course, we give you a suite of templates that you can use and adopt on your project straight away. So let's talk through the range of documents that you might normally produce on a project. So the first one is the business case. This will quite often get produced before they even confirm that they want to go ahead with Salesforce because it's that decision making tool that allows them to explain and understand the return on investment that they're going to get, which quite often senior professionals need to have in place to all confirm and give the nod. So within this, you might go in and do some discovery sessions with them and help to flush out exactly what their problems are, what the solutions could be and what the estimated return investment could be for that business, which could depend on a whole range of different KPIs. It might also look at some of the risks that are involved um, and some of the aspects there as well. So moving through to the second this the business case then evolves into a CRM strategy. So within a CRM strategy document, it will have a product roadmap in there. It will explain which products they want to adopt from Salesforce now and in the future. It will look at that CR the um, the business case reality. It will comprise all of the risks, and you will do a risk mitigation exercise, and it will also prioritize those those high level requirements, which is where Agile project management comes in as well. So it will really map out, this is the plan for the organization, this is what we've all agreed to, this is what we're gonna do over the next one to three years, for example. So moving through to three, you then got the project management plan. Now, if you've got high level requirements that have been prioritized over one to three years, then your project management plan is probably gonna be for each cycle of those projects that you're going to do. So within the project management plan, you want to have the outline of the roles and responsibilities, what the risk assessment is, what the project timeline will be, and have a management strategy of managing the project team. How often are you going to talk, for example? How do things get escalated? Where do you store documents together? And how do you manage your time and budget and coordinate all of that? We've got also a bite-sized video on how to manage projects and what tools to use. So you might want to bounce and have a look at that one as well. Now, moving through to the change management plan, this is quite often something that is missed on projects. And it's really about how do you communicate to people who are involved in a project, particularly the end users. Now, you should always tell and hit, um, you should always tell people what's happening at least three times in three different mediums because different people will receive and hear information in different ways. And so understanding how to communicate that the Salesforce project is coming, what people need to do about it, what their tasks are, why it's important, you need to think very carefully about how you communicate that to people because quite often a lack of user adoption is about communicating communication not really being handled in the right way. So having a change management plan is really important and will quite often involve people in HR, the communications team, particularly maybe the external team or the internal communications team. And it might also involve senior managers as well. So having it very clear about what needs to be communicated to people at different points of the project is really important. The next um, is BA questionnaires. So when you're launching a project, you're going to have design workshops. And what you want to do is get people ready for those design workshops. You want to say to them about what information they need to get ready for that workshop. And you need to give them a set of questions that they can think through and prepare information for. Now, these are really great if they're filled in in advance and sent back to you as a Salesforce professional, because then what you can do is start to read them, understand some of those scenarios, tailor your questions, and also still plug and identify the, those missing bits of information. Now, when you've gathered all of the requirements, you then will create a requirements log, which will have the functional and non-functional requirements in it. But then you can also start building out and researching those technical solutions that you're going to need to deliver as part of it. So they all need documenting somewhere. That might be a spreadsheet. It might be a third party system tool. Again, I'd really encourage you to check out our other bite sized video that looks at some of the communication tools that you might need. Then we move on to process maps. Again, 
These are documents that you'll produce, often using a, a process mapping software tool. You can then share these, download them with the client and ideally have a collaboration tool where they can then own those process maps long term. This is where you're going to document all the processes for that organization, potentially before and after if you've got budget and time to do that. And it really helps map out how the, the new solution and how the new process is going to work when it's in place. Number eight is the technical workbook. Again, a technical workbook might be done not as a hard document necessarily. It might be done in a software solution, but it's really mapping out all the detail around what technical solutions are going to need to be built. So in a requirements log, you might say an object needs to be built to manage invoices um, as, a, as a very basic example. In the technical workbook, you might detail all of the fields that need building for that technical workbook. You might also detail all of the um, the an online form that needs to be produced for that and any third party integration requirements. And so the technical workbook is really detailing all of the nitty gritty bits of a build. And so your Salesforce team, whether that's you or a team around you, can work through all of those requirements and tick them off and know that you've covered everything that needs to be done. Number nine is an app comparison matrix. Now, if you are researching third party apps, it's really advisable that you do a proper assessment of those. We have a template that we would use. And what we do is go back to the client and say, right, we've based on your requirements, your functional requirements, we've researched these different tools for you. Um, these are the pros and cons. These are the ratings on the app exchange. This is where they're based and the type of support they offer. There's a load of things that we'd normally assess in that matrix. And that helps you present back solutions officially and properly to a client. Um, and it looks like you've done your due diligence properly rather than just selling one to them, maybe because you get a kickback or something. It looks more professional. And finally, number 10 is about those training manuals. Now, again, training manuals might be advanced to be integrated with your CRM system. It might include videos and demos and presentations and all sorts of things, or it might be more the traditional training manual that you want within a Word document. Either way, documenting training in some shape or form is really important. So it's there and can be evolved as needed for end users. So they've got something to reference. People really appreciate having written training manuals that also have embedded videos and pictures and everything like that. We have another bite-sized video on 10 ways to optimize your training strategy. So if this is something of interest to you, then I really encourage you to go and check that video out too. So I hope that's given an overview of the 10 different documents that you would commonly produce on a Salesforce project. If you like this content, then please do look in the comments and find out more about our consultancy skills course. If you want to be upskilled and get hands-on tools and templates straight away that you can apply on your projects. We're really here to help build your confidence, your understanding to become amazing Salesforce professionals. So if we can help you, please do reach out. I'd love your thoughts and comments on this video too. So let me know what you think and please do share anything else that you think is relevant to our audience. Take care and have a great day everyone. Bye.